This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. As you and I are recording this, today is the 20-year anniversary of the very last Nitro, March 26th. And we know that Shane showed up at Nitro that night, but back in Cleveland, supposedly, Vince held a meeting with uh, all the talent, sort of explaining to all the wrestlers that, hey, yes, the rumors are true. I've bought WCW, but you don't need to worry because your jobs are safe and uh, your the grosses will be higher than ever because now we've got interpromotional matches. I know you've never even probably flirted with the idea of going to WCW, but you knew who they were and what they were about. Do you remember that meeting in Cleveland and, and what the sentiment amongst the guys was about this acquisition? Yes. I mean, you know, with Vince McMahon, you can believe almost everything he says, but not a hundred percent everything. So, you know, the, the, the wrestlers, I think the undercard and mid card wrestlers were a little bit concerned about their spots because WCW went out of business. Vince bought them. We dominated the competition and they were coming to the WWE. A lot of these popular uh, wrestlers from WCW. So thank God they did the brand split at that particular time, separated Raw and SmackDown. It made more openings for more wrestlers because you can only uh, perform on, on one of the shows. But yeah, for a lot of the undercard and midcard wrestlers, it was a pretty stressful time. Do you remember you know, anybody in particular sticking out in your mind? I mean, if you had to think back to that day, uh, anyone in particular being excited about the acquisition? I understand that everyone could be nervous, but was anyone, oh man, this will be great because I get to wrestle so-and-so or we could do big business with such and such. I think a lot of the main event talent was thinking that because, you know, they, they, they had their job secure and they, they did want to do programs with wrestlers from WCW that they never had programs with. So I thought, uh, for me, it was exciting. I was pretty excited about it. I was happy that, uh, you know, a lot of these wrestlers were coming up that I could perform with. Was there anybody in particular on the WCW side that really stood out to you that you thought, man, I could have a good match with that guy? Booker T. <laughs> yeah. he, he was so talented, gifted, entertaining, funny. Uh, he, he had the whole package. He, he was an, an, an exceptional wrestler. How about somebody else, though? Brock Lesnar actually appeared on wrestling observer live just a few days before this WrestleMania. And at the time Brock's not a part of the WWE. Uh, he does tell the story where he was approached his junior year by Ross. And a lot of people are talking about, Hey, maybe there'll be an opportunity for him in wrestling. I think at one point, uh, the Shamrocks were trying to convince him that perhaps he should go into MMA. Were you watching Brock's amateur career? Were you keeping up with what he was doing in the NCAA? Yes, I followed Brock in college. I thought he was a dominating heavyweight. Uh, I think he only had uh, two losses in his uh, last two years in college, and uh, he was he was really talented. He 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 was one of the most dominating heavyweights in history. So he had an excellent career. When you're watching a guy like that in the amateurs, you know NCAA do really really well in college. Does it cross your mind? Hey, maybe I should reach out to that guy and talk to him about pro wrestling, or is it such a different animal that maybe doesn't cross your mind? Well, you don't know if you can approach wrestlers, you know, the, a lot of them are turned off by pro wrestling because pro wrestling gets more of the limelight than amateur wrestling. So there's a, there's a little bit of a, you know, you know, I guess a negative, uh, persona about pro wrestling and amateur wrestling. But um, I, I didn't approach Brock because I was told that Jerry Briscoe was recruiting him. And he, Br Jerry would go around and travel to amateur wrestling events and try to recruit, recruit athletes for WWE. And he's the one that actually brought in Brock. Did uh, Jerry ever approach you when you were an amateur wrestler? No, he didn't. But Vince McMahon approached me right after the Olympics and made me that first offer. And... Uh, when I turned it down, I'm sure Jerry thought I wasn't interested. So he never tried to contact me again until I approached the company again, two years later, and we made a deal then. As we head into this WrestleMania, there's a lot going on. Uh, ECW is going to fold. We know that all of a sudden we see Paul E doing commentary with JR because Lawler had walked out that left an opportunity for Paul Heyman. 
so a lot of the ECW folks who are on that roster who were probably behind on pay and a little frustrated and nervous about what the future may hold, see their fearless leader strut his ass down the ramp. And now he's going to do commentary. And then just a few days before this show, WrestleMania 17, WCW runs their very last nitro. And it's announced that Vince McMahon had indeed purchased world championship wrestling. So there's a lot of things going on in the wrestling world, but also for Vince McMahon outside of wrestling, the XFL is running, but not exactly lighting the woods on fire. It's, uh, it's not doing great. Bob Costas has a show on HBO at the time, reaches out to Vince and to my surprise, Vince agreed to do the interview and it didn't go well. It was almost a gotcha interview. I think is what they call it. I know you weren't there for that interview, but have you ever had an interview where you think you're going in to promote one thing and then the guy just sort of goes off into left field into territory you really don't want to be talking about? No, it never happened to me, but it definitely happened to Vince. And whether Vince was being the real Vince or the character Vince, he raised a lot of eyebrows. Yes. That draws ratings. It says, holy crap, this guy's crazy. Right. I need to know who this guy is and what he's about. So if you're a non-fan, it, it, it might have turned you off, but a lot of fans, I think it drew it to, uh, you know, drew them to Vince, to the company. So I think that what he did was effective, and Vince would do that things periodically. You know, every once in a while, he would go off the deep end and do his crazy character, Vince McMahon. <laughs> Yeah, he did here and got a lot of attention for himself. He would have a few of those HBO interviews over the years, and I'm sure we'll talk about those. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about the promotion for WrestleMania 17. Uh, there once upon a time was a great show on TSN called off the record hosted by Mr. Landsberg. And they had, uh, an all Canadian panel show with Val Venus, Chris Jericho, edge and Christian. And then the day of WrestleMania, they aired an interview with you. Do you remember the interview with Michael Landsberg? And what can you tell us about that experience? Yes, it was a great interview. We talked about the Olympics, talked about WWE. Uh, it was it was really awesome to be on a show that, that was that was that popular in Canada. It was a major network show. It was a huge show on TV. And being a part of it made me feel very special. Like, you know, and, and at the same time, wrestling is really, really popular in Canada. So there's a lot of demand for wrestling. And I think that's why Michael Landsberg interviewed me for WrestleMania. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the Ross report on March 26th. Um, Jim Ross would, would say that you're the most talented performer he's ever been around with your level of experience. And Meltzer would even comment on that saying, quote, I can't come up with anyone to dispute that there are guys who were two years in, who were very close in the ring. But I'm not even sure naturals like Owen Hart or June, June Akiyama or even Kenta Kobashi at two years in had his polish in the ring and none had his presence, charisma, or interview ability. It's so ridiculous to label someone as a probable all-time great with this little time in, but barring an injury, I think it's as close to a lock as could possibly be possible. Something, I mean, he's, he's putting you over in a major way here. Not just Meltzer, but Jim Ross. Is any of that stuff on your radar at all, or are you just making towns at this point. I was just keeping my nose to the grindstone and staying focused and staying humble. Uh, I did hear the, you know, the praise that was uh, given to me by Meltzer and Jim Ross, and I appreciated it. It made me feel really good. It made me feel like I was on the right track, and I knew I still had a lot of work ahead of me, so I wasn't finished. We've never really talked about it, but when do you first learn who Dave Meltzer is? Does someone bring you the newsletter in the locker room or how does his name first come up as best you recall? Uh, the wrestlers would talk about him, you know, they, Hey, Meltzer said this or Meltzer said that. And I was like, who's Dave Meltzer? Right. I didn't really know. And, uh, I found out quickly, you know, he has a lot of influence with the internet and the WWE universe and all the fans of wrestling. So I know he's been doing it for years and, uh, he's actually pretty good at it. Yes, he is. Uh, let's hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.